Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, I'm VDB and I just bought myself a magnificent 1984 Massey Ferguson 210-4 tractor, which I adore, kinda. You see, it's already equipped with a loader, but unfortunately, it doesn't have a power steering and combined with all that front weight, it's a real pain to drive. But luckily with YouTube, when you have a problem, it's fairly easy to find a solution. And like many others, I opted to go with an electrical power steering for its simplicity and because it's dirt cheap. So let's head back once again to the scrapyard. So here's today's victim, I mean Dorner. It's a 2006 Saturn View. It won't start. <laughs> The battery's dead, probably. Have you looked at the battery? No, I didn't even see there's a battery. Check compressions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're gonna be famous on YouTube. You know that? <laughs> well, how famous can I really be? <laughs> on my channel, not that much. Not yet. <laughs> no, yeah, not yet. <laughs> You might have enough juice. Hey, you got it. There it is. And I can hear your dad farting. Yeah. Hey, and we're back in the shop. Well, it's actually days, uh, even weeks later, because I was waiting for something to arrive in the mail. And that's okay, that's fine. That gave me time to jump around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now we're back because the thing has arrived and it's there you go this well it's actually kind of a brain box and a potentiometer that's it this is needed to turn on the steering module and the pot is simply to set how strong we want the power steering to help us steer the thing all right so let's look up everything to see if at least the power steering i got is working which i don't know <laughs> Oh yeah, now that thing is way smaller. Prefer this uh, version. So this is in, this is out. Let's write it down. Okay, as of right now, it's not activated. Just need to hook this wire so it will tell the brain box, hey, something is on. And I heard a click, which is a good sign. <laughs> wow! Okay, let's put it in minimum. Oh, maybe that's the max, actually. I don't know. Oh my God. Wow, it is strong. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to show you how strong it is. Yes! All right, so I changed my fish scale to my CNC, which is, well, big enough for what I need it for. And I'm gonna try to pull on it and get a reading. So unplug, so no, with no power, all of my weight, or some of it, a thousand pounds, easily. Okay, turn it on, there's a click. Whoa! <laughs> okay, I want to show you with a finger a, a hundred pounds. Did I say a thousand pounds? I meant a hundred pounds. There you go. Let's unplug everything before I break it. All right, before doing anything to the steering column, I want to raise the uh, loader and uh, see how hard it is to turn that steering wheel to set a starting point or a comparison for later on. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this tractor is not in tip-top shape. Although I did pay kind of a good price for it. Well, I know I'm gonna sound like an old man, but things seem a bit more expensive these days. Some call this inflation in prices, the COVID tax. Anyhow, the electrical is pretty messed up on this machine and this is how I turn on the glow plug. Let's call it 35. Alright, so let's call it 35 pounds and I know it's a good test because we're at the worst conditions to turn the wheel for this tractor. We're not moving, the loader is up and we're on a concrete floor. So 
35 it is. Now let's get to work. Okay, first thing first, to get a better access to the steering column, I'm gonna remove the loader. <sighs> Challenge of the day. Getting the fucking steering off. And yes, this is the second one I made because uh, yeah, this one was too small. Come on! Hey! Woo! <laughs> Well, I'm glad I got to the bottom of this steering column because, uh, yeah, it seems that uh, yeah, there's no gasket and uh, yeah, there's a lot of water inside of this. Not a good sign. Hmm. Oh boy, did I got worried for a second here. Uh, you see, this is the bottom gear of the steering column. Uh, this drives a half moon gear that converts into pushing and pulling rods to turn the wheels. So I got worried because there's like a worn out section. Yeah, there's a clear step. Hmm. So yeah, is it that over the years something has shifted? And now only the tip was engaging with the other gear. Uh oh. Well, you have to know that this magnificent Marcy Ferguson 210 is a unicorn in the tractor world. Not because it's that good, eh, not really, but more because it's freaking rare and getting parts for it is a real nightmare. So having a worn out gear was not a good start. But after I cleaned up all the grease and the water from the gear casing, this is what I found. Here's a bearing! So the step is to fit with this bearing, and the gear is actually in pretty good shape. Woo, that was close. So here's the plan. I'll try to replace the tractor steering column shaft by the Saturn power steering. Although it's quite larger than the simple shaft, I think I can make it work. Well, I have to, otherwise there's no video. Like, uh, thank you for watching, uh, see you on the next episode, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe. So this is the bottom section of the steering column that I just cut. After that, I machined and pressed in kind of a coupler. Um, I also bore that side to fit the power steering. And gently, I will try to tappy tap tap this side to be slightly pressed in halfway. And after that, I'm gonna put some tacks around the shaft too. And on this side, well, I'll do exactly the same thing. So let's go to work. Easy. <laughs> Looks fairly straight to me. Here I'm putting temporary braces to the bottom and top section, which I will eventually have to join the two together somehow. All right, so I think having the power steering sub-assembly outside the tractor is gonna be way easier to build all the brackets to fix that thing. And also, I do need to weld or attach this top section with the bottom one, but still be able to split it in two if uh, one day I need to do some maintenance on the power steering and have to remove it from there. So yeah, outside is gonna be way easier. So that's the way to go. And yeah, back to work.
Oh, that's a funny one. My family and I have a rule about when they come to see me in the shop, because I always wear earbuds so I can hear them coming in, and usually they scare the crap out of me. So the rule is just to flash the lights as they enter the shop. But it seems that my lovely wife forgot about the flashy, flashy part. My son? My son? My son? There's so much disappointment in our voice. All tractors with no power steering were equipped with a big ass steering wheel. Normal, it gives more leverage to turn the wheels. The downside though is that once you get behind the wheel of your tractor with such a large steering wheel, you get caught between it, the fenders and the transmission tunnel. And since I need to remain the connection between the steering column and the steering wheel, why not go smaller? After all, I won't need all that leverage with the new power steering. Okay, it's not the right brand, but I can fix this. Nice! By adding more mechanical stuff under the dash, now the throttle lever was interfering with the power steering module. Nothing too hard to fix though. I already mentioned it earlier, the tractor's electrical system is in a bad shape, so a big part of the power steering convention was also to fix it. I'm talking changing the ignition switch, the time gauge, new lights, new horn, and much more new stuff. I'll try to reuse as many original switches that I can. I even machine a new nub to replace a broken one so I can reuse that switch. I'll spare you the long list of messed up electrical problems I found on this tractor because I think I found the main problem of it all. Well, I don't think it's supposed to do that, right? Luckily, I've got the electrical diagram to redo the entire system, but apparently, wiring color coding was only invented after 1984? Because there's no colors on this diagram. This one is from the Hayabusa, and we can clearly see colors like uh, brown and white, pink, and so on and so forth. But that's fine, I'll figure it out. But it will be more like a game of Clue deducting each wire one at a time. Hmm, if the blue wire goes to the real lights and the green wire goes to the front lights, that could only mean one thing, that it was the Colonel Mustard with the dagger in the kitchen. Yes! Everything should be okay, but I don't know. We'll see. No explosion? That's a good start. Whoa! Hey! We are. Ooh! I heard a click. Yeah, I can hear clearly hear the click. Before starting the tractor, I ran a few tests. 
Checking for voltage. I also installed the steering wheel and completely forgot that I was still filming. Hey, I'm still recording. Oh, go plug. Now let's move to the force test and see how easier it is with the new power steering. Again with the loader up and on a concrete floor. And for this one, to get a somewhat reading, I had to make multiple turns. But let's set it at let's say 3.6 pounds, which is 10 times less than before. And keep in mind with a smaller steering wheel. Okay, last final touch before the grand finale. All jokes aside, it's night and day with the new power steering. Side note though, I used the tractor last weekend for about 3 hours straight, digging with the loader and leveling my driveway, and I have to say that the power steering motor got hot. Too hot for my taste. So since they only made this model from 2002 to 2007, I think I'm gonna get a spare one while they still have sudden views of these years at the scrapyard. Three days later. Yep, yeah, I've got a spare. For the next episode, I'll be working on a loader's bucket. This thing is insanely huge, and I'll be reducing its size to fit better my tractor. I also gonna build a quick attach system for the bucket, cause I'm planning on building a set of forks, and I wanna be able to switch quickly between the two. But till then, go do something with your head, your hands or both. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.